1874. Preview show. Well, it's time for a match preview show as Aston Villa take on Brentford at Villa Park, Saturday, 3 o'clock, which is tomorrow. And yes, this preview is going out later than we would have liked it to, thanks to Dave Reed's hectic schedule today. I am joined by Sky Sports News' very own Dave Reed. But before we ask Dave how he is, I should say that this show is sponsored by Luke Roper. If you want to get 20% off everything that Luke have to offer, then you, if you use, I oh, could help if I could talk, you tell I've done the show for a while. If you use the code, I can't even remember what the code is. I'm hoping Lee's going to tell me what the code is in my ear. Is it TVV20, the code? I believe it is. Yes, TVV20 is the code. If you use that code, you'll get 20% off everything Luke have to offer. So apologies, there's been no content over the last few weeks. I have had the flu. I have moved house. Dan Rollington has got married. It's all just been going off. I had no internet when I moved house, which is obviously quite crucial when you're trying to do content and try and try and do podcasts. But my new internet seems to be working absolutely perfectly. So here we go. We're back regular content again on 1874. Now I've done all that, Dave. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. I've, I've missed you, Dan. I've missed, missed you. you. Yeah, I don't, see, don't speak to you, you know, unless we're doing the shows. No, you don't yeah. speak to me. You don't get in touch unless we're doing a, a preview <laughs> show. And even I have to initiate the text every Wednesday or Thursday as to as to when the show is going to be. And we do have to base it around <laughs> you on a Friday. You're a, bit, you're a busy man. Have you been anywhere exciting? Have you been to Brentford, maybe? No, no. Friday's a difficult day sometimes if I'm if I'm working anyway, just because it's it's quite a hectic day work wise. But um, no, hopefully, uh, hopefully my schedule should clear over the over the coming weeks. Although I am now not going to be here for the next week or so. Yeah, I'm defining it to draft <laughs> this one. It's a draft in a replacement. I've read putting in a putting in a, a holiday request. Very light annual leave put in from <laughs> from, from Dave Ray. Let's see who we've got in the chat then. We've got Matthew Arras saying, come on boys, tuning in from Ibiza. Excellent stuff. I wish I was in Ibiza, one of my favourite places. Um yeah, Ronan O'Reilly asking me how Rollo's wedding was. Very, very good. I got quite drunk. I would actually go as far as to say I was probably the drunkest person at the wedding and Really, I was, I was going to say post speech. I don't remember much of the evening, but actually during speech, I don't remember much of the much of the evening either. But we had a good time, and Rollo's now a, a, mar- a married man, and yeah, it was a it was a brilliant day. It was myself, James Rushton, and Kendrick representing Aston Villa Football Club at the uh, at the wedding. Right, gaming and stuff, reeling off more excuses than prime Jurgen Klopp. Yep, I, I, there was a few excuses in there. In fairness, I mean, I did a show this morning for who scored at seven a.m. and I looked like death. And sounded like death. So hopefully this show, I'll look better and and sound better. David Stars is here for Dave Reed's spicy take, and we will of course come to that at the end of the show, as we sometimes do because we don't always remember to do it. Right then, Dave Villa v Brentford. Brentford been a bogey team a little bit over over the years, you could say, but it does fail over the last twelve to eighteen months. Villa have kind of got rid of that monkey off their back, doesn't it? And you know, it's a it's a very winnable game at Villa Park. I think you go into it thinking that. You know, almost almost expecting really, given the way the season has gone, that Villa can get three points in this game. Um, but you're right, Brentford have been a difficult team in the past, but I don't think they've won a game for in the league anyway for uh, almost two months now. So, you know, they are having a bit of a rocky patch, but they're a good enough side to stay up. They obviously, I think, will stay up in the Premier League this season. And uh, you sound I, quite I was... sure of that. I'm not. I wouldn't be a hundred percent sure of that at the moment. I think their their defining factor, and I've said this before on here, is that they've got one of the best one of the best managers in the league in Thomas Frank. He is so good, and um, he's always one that keeps quite a level head. I think they went on a run last season where, you know, similarly they went two months without defeat, and he's always very uh, level headed and not not kind of getting too ahead of himself. And I think he's probably the same during this period of time as well. They're another club that have suffered with. Horrible injuries this year, and obviously the their best player missing as well for a good chunk of the season. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm confident they'll have enough to stay up simply because the manager is is absolutely outstanding. Yeah, he's a he's a good manager, no doubt, and he's done one of, one of the best jobs in in England really over the last over the last five years or so. What he's done to Brentford to, to stabilise them and actually get them punching well above their weight in the, probably in the Championship to be fair, and in the Premier League as well. Brentford have never really seen that day is like this. Certainly, in my lifetime, I'm probably stretching back for people that are uh, a lot older than me. Become a bit more resolute recently, haven't they? Last result, nil nil against Brighton. Probably had to because 
every time I've watched them this season, I feel like I've watched them quite a lot. They haven't seemed to have that defensive solidarity that really their Premier League pilgrimage has been built on. I would say they've always been very good at the back. They're quite fluid in the way that they switch from a from a three to a four. Like you say, they have had injuries. Personnel have had to change quite a lot. But the back three has seemed quite settled in in, in recent weeks. That will help because obviously we know as well from, from Villa, the constant churn of players changing the back four doesn't help. They have been nowhere near the, d- the defensive levels of, of, of the last few pre- Premier League years. I think Collins has uh, struggled since his move. He's, he's always felt like he has a bit of a, a mistake in him. It's, it's Collins, Ayer and Zanka, isn't it? The the, the back three at the, at the moment. But, you know, getting the clean sheet, that will breed some confidence because Brighton, not really an easy team to keep a clean sheet against either. No, not at all. And I think you're right. I think Thomas Frank has probably gone back to basics a little bit in yeah, the last couple of to. games. Um, yeah, because they have conceded too many goals. You're right, and you mentioned injuries. I think they've missed Ben Mee considerably, not just because of, of you know his defensive ability, but you know he's obviously a, a great leader within that team as well, and he's able to be an organizer in that team. So they've definitely missed Ben Mee. I think you know Ethan Pinnock has shown great levels since Good defender. he's come up to the Premier League. He's one of the hosts who's come through the leagues, like you know a few of the Brentford players have done, like Rico Henry and. They've missed Rico Henry as well, who's a great outlet for them. For for them on the left. Well, wing side. backs in general has been they've been decimated because Hickey's been out for a long period as well. Hasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So they have had a lot of disruption at the back, and I think I think some of the the, the Brighton fans were singing "Boring, Boring Brentford" the other night, from what I was reading earlier. And I think it's more a case of you know let's stop conceding goals, and then when you've got Ivan Tony at the at the other end and. and Brian and Buemo, who's now coming back to fitness and might well get a start at the weekend. You know, they're always going to score. So I think from Thomas Frank's point of view, it's kind of let's get back to base. It's stop conceding goals and, and we're a threat at, at the other end. And, um, you know, they have had a lot of injuries. And Nathan Collins is, is a player, actually, that I thought was a great signing for Brentford. I thought they nicked him at just the right time. But he has struggled a little bit. And I kind of hope for his sake, you know, he's got a lot of time to develop and still become a really solid Premier League player. I think he probably will get there, but I think he he will probably admit that the last year hasn't been as good as he would have hoped it to have been. No, Dave Ray definitely read the same article that I read before coming on this show, if he's, if he's referencing the, the, the boring, boring Brentford. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons they've struggled, take away the, the injuries, but I do think now we're at the point where every team you could talk about, you can be like, no, they've had, in, they've had injuries this season. We've certainly got our own woes, which we'll come on to. I do think, and this is where Villa are very fortunate with having the same consistency of having the same goalkeeper for so long now. The goalkeeper change. We did a segment on Sky Sports News January 23. And I think I said at the time that I might Raya in the in the top three goalkeepers in the Premier League. I think I had him, Alisson and Martinez. Kind of got laughed at. Emma Payton, the main culprit, actually, laughing at me. That day, Roy's obviously gone on to Arsenal. Now, I do think players always need a season, whether that be outfielders, whether that be goalkeepers as, as well. Flecken hasn't been as good as Raya. You wouldn't expect him to be because I think Raya is a is a top level goalkeeper. But that can, you know, we're talking about their defence and you know reasons for why they haven't been as good defensively this season. I think that's probably a mitigating factor as well. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I don't think he had the the greatest start to the season. I think over the last couple of months, I think he showed signs that he, you know, he could well be um, an able replacement for for David Ray. Good shot stopper. Yeah, not saying that he'll he'll kind of be at the level of David Ray, but certainly I think he's shown an improvement in the last couple of months. So I think that's a really positive sign for Brentford going forward because I think if he'd have continued the way he started the season you wonder whether Brentford would have had to go searching again for a number one this coming summer window. And I think, you know, the fact that they are, you know, he has improved, I think, over the last couple of months might mean that they're able to kind of part that position in terms of improvement in the summer. So I think you're right. The goalkeeper situation has been another position where they've had to reset and almost, you know, the forward position is probably going to have to be reset again in the summer. And when you have the spine of the team, they've signed be... someone, haven't they? I can't remember who it is now, but they've they've spent an awful lot of money on a on, on a striker who's coming in, in the summer. They've already done that deal of, of Tony's replacement. I'm sure they have, and I cannot remember for the life of me who it is. Someone will surely tell us in the in the in the chat. But I'm sure they've already re- already replaced, and they know they know he's going. Obviously, I'm sure they've already they've already done that signing. Yeah, we, I mean, we should know, which is poor. I know, we should. Us. We should. 
But uh, you've dumped that on me right on Sorry. the spot. And I can't remember. <laughs> I'll serve, serve you right attacking last minute. Were, have that. They were, I know they were definitely interested in the young boy. Uh, was it Club Bruges? Uh, Maybe Noosa, that's what I'm Antonio of. Noosa. Oh yeah, in the no, summer. They, they, um, in they, they, yeah, but they definitely did sign someone after that as well. Um, and I can't think for the life of me. Eagle Tiago, I've been told. Yep, yeah, Eagle Tiago from Club Bruges. A couple of people have said that in the comments. So we're not oh, the. Maybe it was a different. We're not being wound up because two people have said it. It'd be a great prank if there was multiple people saying the same name and the player didn't even exist. Thirty million, John, 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 John O'Ridge reckons. But let, let's talk about Ivan Tony. You know, I think Mbwemo will play this this weekend. Thomas Frank basically spoke about that he'd come back and he was pushing for a star. He's it's a shame for him because he was at a really good start to the season. He's one of those players. You know, this is their third year, I think, in the Premier League now, and he's got better every year. So he's been a huge miss. But we have to talk about. Ivan Tony, quite like the England stuff, made me laugh a few. Well, last week, whenever whenever the game was, because everyone was raving about Tony, but I think anyone actually said anything about Watkins, who pretty much made that equaliser by the way that he the way that he forced kept kind of keeping the ball in. So, you know, he's going to be billed if Watkins plays as as Watkins v Tony this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's a little bit unfortunate, really. I thought Ollie Watkins got some unwarranted heat uh, during the international break for no real reason. I don't, I don't really understand why, because he was given absolutely no service um, against against Brazil. Um, it it kind of will be billed as a as a as a Watkins versus Tony, but for me, I mean, we're kind of going off subject here, but I think there's room for both of them in the in the England squad. I really do. Oh, alongside you, you do not know Gareth Southgate, David. No, I know, I know, and he'll probably choose Marcus Rashford. But for me, Watkins and Tony are both ahead of Marcus Rashford in my in my England squad right now. So if I was Gareth Southgate, I'd be taking all three. Um, but uh, you know, I think, and I think Thomas Frank's also been asked about the differences between Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony. I think you know, from Frank's point of view, he said previously that Ivan Tony is slightly better in his link up play and holding up the ball. But I th- actually think that's one of the areas where. Ollie Watkins has really improved, you know. Over yeah, yeah, undoubtedly. Under, under, under Unai Emery. So, you know, for, for me, they're, they're on a par. I think it's a toss of the coin as to who is who is the better player. I think they both, um, you know, excel in slightly different areas. Um, and, you know, I think for, for Ivan Tony, you know, from he, he will be looking this summer for a move probably to you know, a Champions League level club, whereas Ollie Watkins is, is already at that level now. Oh, love so, that life. Stays a spicy take. Yeah, well, well, I, I think, you know, Ivan Tony will still have to, in some people's eyes, have to prove himself on that European level, have to prove himself at a at a bigger club uh, without trying to sound disrespectful, even though it does sound disrespectful towards Brentford. I think, you know, from, from a lot of people's perspectives, he will still have to, to do good things uh, at a top six club, whereas Ollie Watkins has already shown that he can do that. I wonder where he goes. I've not got a. Everyone just assumes Arsenal. I don't think so. I think Isak will be at Arsenal's target for a, for a centre forward. I think you know, he only needs a move for Champions League club, top six club. But there's you know five teams in the in the Champions League, and probably the teams other than Arsenal that you could link him with, they won't be in 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 the Champions League. I could actually see him going back to Newcastle and replacing. Replacing Isak, that's something that I could potentially say. I don't see Spurs going in for him for, for some reason. I don't see Arsenal. Chelsea, perhaps. But then, you know, they're bang average mid-table. Currently, you might as well stay at Brentford for, the, for, the, for, for, for where they are at the, at the moment, albeit they, they won last night. So it will be interesting. Now, the England thing, the England stuff, I, I think it purely depends on what does Gareth Southgate want. Does he want someone who, if Kane gets injured, can be a complete replica? If he does, then I think he picks Tony. If he wants someone who's an alternative to bring on during games and not and, and maybe perhaps come on with Kane, a, a direct centre forward, but someone who does different things, then I think he'll pick Watkins. I genuinely think it, it, that's as simple as, as what it comes down to. But my gut's telling me that he will go with Watkins. Watkins has obviously been in more squads. He started more games. I think I think he'll pick Watkins. Although I've said, you know, again, I said on Sky and got Villa fans hammering me for it. You know, for Villa, I wouldn't change Watkins for anyone, not at all. But I do think for England, you know, if you were building a team in Southgate's mould, you have Tony because he does do the things that Kane does a bit a bit more without being, you know, as good as all the things as Harry Kane. Yeah, and I also think the penalty thing is a factor. 
uh, no, a, no, a consideration. I, I would just I, lose on penalties anyway. It doesn't matter if anyone can take one or I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but you know, having a player who is almost a specialist um, in that particular area, I think it, it will play into a decision. Do you think? Manager and a, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I mm. think, you know, when it comes to the decision when you're kind of five minutes from the end of extra time and you want to bring someone on to score a penalty, you know, England did it in the Euros final, didn't they, with... I think they brought on a couple of players late to try to take penalties. We brought Carragher on once. Remember, we brought, remember, we brought Carragher yeah. on and he took the pen before yeah. the whistle and then he missed. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people disagree with that, but you know, if I'm the Gareth Southgate, I do, I would, I would consider that as as a factor. That is a, a relatively spicy take. I feel like we're moving up the Nando's <laughs> hot sauce at the uh, at the moment with, with with your takes. Let's talk. Let's talk about Villa. Then we, we we've done Brentford. Man City game Wednesday. Let's, let's look back on it because obviously, as I described earlier, due to my woes, there was no, there was there was no show. Were you surprised by the changes that Unai Emery made? Do you think he made those changes with this weekend and, and Thursday in mind, thinking that those two were the games where you know maybe we'd need our our big hitters and need our best eleven, and it was more worthwhile to play them in this game because you know Tillerman's not playing, Bailey not playing, Paul Torres. I don't, I don't believe their fitness injury related per se. Definitely rotation in mind there. And it, I don't think he threw the Man City game. And, you know, in parts, Villa were very, very good. I've, I've watched it back. But it does feel like he had a massive keener eye on the game that's coming up tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, when I saw the team, I was stunned. And I was actually surprised with a lot of the reaction that I, I kind of got to um, a tweet that I put out. Ooh, was it a spicy um, take, Dave? It, no, no, it wasn't. But I think it was. It was just in regards to the team news, and I, you know, I was kind of like, you know, Ollie Watkins is out. What, what do we do for this game? And a lot of people were saying, rest a few. Um, you know, it's almost a free hit. Um, and I, I, I was staunchly the other way, the opposite. My feeling going into the game was, play your strongest eleven. You do not know what's around the corner, and I think doing that puts almost unnecessary pressure pressure on this Brentford game. Um, yeah, I know we could have still got pumped 4-0 by Manchester City because they could do that to anyone. And I know that, you know, we could still lose to Brentford playing our strongest team tomorrow and we could have got injuries against Manchester City. I realise all of those scenarios. But my opinion at the start of the game or when the team was announced was that you have to play your strongest eleven at this stage of the season because you don't know what's around the corner. Um, now, having said all of that, I actually, having watched the game, and as we've all kind of found out under Unai Emery, you understand every selection that he makes. And as you watch the game unfold, I understood every team selection that he made. And I, I, I get afterwards, you know, he said we did rest a couple of players in, you know, Pau Torres, Leon Bailey. But, you know, Longley is a very able replacement, almost not, not light for light, but a very high level. And then the players that did start, like Zaniolo, uh, like Morgan Rogers in the positions that they started in, I could see from the game plan why they started, and that was to carry the team up the pitch, yeah. like taking the ball with them. And you know, by the end of the ninety minutes, I kind of think, well, yeah, fair enough. I know why he's done that. You know, he took Duran off during the game in order to try and <clears> keep <throat> him fresh. And in the end, I was kind of thinking, well, you know what? In, as you say in most most of these podcasts, you know, in Unai we trust. You know, I, before the game I was thinking, play strongest eleven, and then by the end I was like, you know what, I understood exactly why you've made those choices. Yeah, I think I'm. I, I understood it. If you look at some a couple of the players he didn't play, not so much Tillemans maybe, but Bailey and Paul Torres. You know, Bailey very rarely gets through ninety minutes anyway. You know, keeping fresh for for the home game, and Paul Torres has come back. From a, from a big injury, none of us want anything to happen to, to him. You know, when you've got the three games in a week, as, as as we have, probably is best to make him sit one out. Is the best one for him to sit out the hardest game. I know we've already beaten Man City, but at that point, we we were like at the the peak end of of what Villa can do. I think at that we we were really on a on a hell of a run. We're not on that run at the moment, so I can I, I can understand that with the selection in, in topic in vogue. We've we've just been talking about some interesting comments coming along in in the chat. John O'Ridge is worried about Douglas Louise, one yellow card, and he gets a two game ban. If he doesn't play tomorrow and he's rested or doesn't get booked, it resets. 
So do you think that will play into his selection? Do you think maybe he sits this one out, bearing in mind John McGinn's back as well? Uh, <laughs> I think I think Douglas Louise probably starts every game. Um, but told, don't make any there tackles, is, Douglas. <laughs> yeah, there is huge responsibility on him in this game not to make a tackle. <laughs> um, but it's very hard to put the leash on a player when you when you when you kind of start a, a football match because you go into game mode, and you know if Brentford are on a quick counter and he needs to bring someone down, he's probably going to do it. So, I think it will be a consideration, but. I think Douglas Louise will start the game. I think the interesting thing is whether Tielemans starts and if he does, where he starts and then who misses out if Tielemans plays um, because I don't I don't think he started on the left since the home game against Newcastle and that's a, you know a couple of months ago now. Uh, and since then he's not he's not played on the left, he's played uh, either central midfield as he has done in John McGinn's absence or he's played off the striker as the second striker or, you know, the Spurs game, we all know what happened there and he was kind of in a three. So does Uno Emery go back to him playing on the left-hand side? Possibly. It could be a, a needs-must situation because he's been in such good form and it also then enables Diaby and Bailey to play in the same team. And yeah. both of those players are in good form as well. So... My hunch would be that it would be Bailey, McGinn, Louise and, and Tielemans in the midfield with Diaby and probably Duran up front, I would have thought. Not Watkins? Do I think Watkins well, will play? I think Watkins will be back. I th- he is available. He's available. But whether it's a case of... I think also Emery might consider what it would do to John Duran not starting him. Having it's a game on th- there's a game on Thursday. There's there is a game on Thursday. Play, there is, but I think Ollie Watkins will start <clears throat> on Thursday. No, Ooh. I'm quite convinced of that. For me, the league is far and away the the priority. I don't see why you would not play Watkins in a, in a Premier League. For me, the game on Saturday is way more important than the game on Thursday. In in, in my that's my opinion. People might feel differently, but that's that's how I feel about it. You know, if you just say to Duran, "Look, Ollie's back. You're going to play on Thursday." I think that would be the way I would go. But, you know, ultimately, I would trust what, what Unai says. I, I, I do agree with you on the on the midfield. I think McGinn will come in and play left there instead of, instead of yeah. Rodgers. My and Tielemans will continue central? Yeah, because I think you won't change Diaby. Diaby is in the team now. Bailey is on the right. That's so enough. I think I'm, all I'm basing this on is that when we played West Ham, we were quite a physical and combative team away from home. He decided that Tillemans and Louise was the right midfield for that guy. I look at Brentford and West Ham has been similar types of teams in terms of they're quite physical and they're good in transition. I think if he picked it for that game and he didn't break that up during that game, I know we didn't have McGinn that day. I think we get the better performances from John McGinn when he's come from wide and playing that box and he's a he's he's a goal threat. I prefer him there. Even if he changes it halfway through, if it's not working, I think he will start with McGinn on the left. I think when McGinn doesn't play either left or right, I think we miss his impact in coming and making that box be fair. That Again, that's just that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, and I agree. I agree with that. He is better. I think he has played better on on uh, coming in from the left-hand side. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if he does start Tielemans central midfield, I can... Totally understand it because Tillemans hasn't really put a foot wrong when he's played there in place of of John McGinn. Um, so I can totally understand that. I just think that you know, given John McGinn's freshness and physicality, that you know, it might he might decide to play him play him central m- midfield and, and move Tillemans. But I, again, I, I agree with you. I think McGinn is better coming off the left, and therefore, if he decides to go Tillemans, I would totally totally understand that. Danny Hoxton says the league is top priority until coefficient is guaranteed to give fifth Champions League. PSR is looming heavy. Need the Champions League injection above anything else. Sadly, Conference League has to take a back seat. That, I think that's a sensible. That's a sensible I comment. That's that's how I, I feel. It, I think it depends on. It, I think it depends totally on on Ollie Watkins' fitness. He's available for for selection, and if he thinks, if there's any slight doubt over Ollie Watkins, I think John Duran starts because yeah. 
I think Ollie Watkins is going to be so keen, not just for Thursday, but the rest of the Premier League running. If there's oh, any, I think sort you of just doubt, forget you forget think... Thursday. If you're saying like if you don't want to take risk on Saturday, I would no way risk him in the Conference League with Premier League games looming. Mean, not a chance. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think he's going to be so keen, not just not just for the rest of the European campaign, but for Premier League as well. So if there is a doubt, I think John Duran starts. But if if he's totally fine, then. I would probably start Ollie Watkins, but I, I just get the feeling that maybe he'll kind of hold Ollie Watkins back a little bit. But I don't know. We'll wait and see, won't we, for the team well, he's well, dropped. Selection is interesting. Unless we're starting to get a few bodies back. I know we've lost Ramsey for the rest of the season, but you know we, we've not had him for, for the whole season. In all honesty, I read Jacob. I read Jacob's article. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. I think maybe we just call it. I think it'd be we make it more life more difficult if we go back in and do another one, won't it? And then you'll have to cobble together something on audio to get the audio out. Can hear apparently everyone can hear us, but the video's frozen. So we've had a good chat. We've everyone's just heard me talking to the uh, talking to the producer. Let's carry on. Let's carry on that chat then. No one wants to see us anyway. As I look disgusting today, right? I look disgusting. At least still speaking to me in case anyone was wondering. As I'm trying to present a show here, and they got they just having a conversation with me in the air. Everyone can still hear, but we are frozen. Right, let's carry on. I was going to say before before that rude interruption by producer Lee. It's almost like having Adam Bates here. It really, really is. I was going to say the fact that Tillemans, back to Tillemans, didn't start on Wednesday. That tells me that he's going to start this game. Because otherwise, he wouldn't have been rested, would he? He'd have he'd have he'd have played that game. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think it's just a, it's just a case of where he starts. Does he start central midfield or or does he start wide left? Um, yeah. So I think that, that's the that's the selection decision to be made. Yeah, Adam Slack saying continue, Dan, continue. Adam Slack, the best set of eyes I've ever seen in my life. I had had a few a few beers in Dublin, but the best set of eyes I've I've ever seen. Right then, let's get Dave Reed's spicy take. That's what everyone's hanging around for now, even though they can't see our wonderful. Well, they can see our faces, but I can only imagine. What the frozen image has done to me, but yeah, let's get your spicy take for the game, Dave. And you won't have prepped one because you probably forgot that we were doing this. <laughs> I didn't think. I feel like I've already kind of dropped one with John Durant to start. Should we get? Should we go okay. with that? I've just seen the frozen picture, and yes, we do look both asleep. I look. I look terrible. Yeah, Dave Reed got quite seductive with his eyes closed and his finger in his mouth. Quite uh, <laughs> oh, a bit of seduction from from, from Dave Reed. So you, you were saying you've already done your spicy take, essentially. I think that's yeah. I think that's going to be my spicy take. Yeah. Okay. I don't really have one. I'm not really a spicy take kind of kind of guys, to be honest. Right then, let's go because no one can see us. I look the better according to Bolg the villain. So thank you very much, Bolg the villain. If you've just tuned in and you're wondering why the screen's frozen, we don't know, but at least you can hear us. And yeah, you'll have heard me having a conversation with Lee, the producer, but wouldn't have heard Lee, the producer. So I would have sounded like I'm going absolutely crazy. Greg and myself will be back on Monday with a podcast. I think he might even be back. From his from, from his uh from his travels, nice for him to, to to come back to the UK where he actually lives. And yeah, more content ramping up now. Finally got through my moving woes, internet woes, Rollo's wedding. I'm here. Let's do some more content. Let's 